Hello everyone. Welcome to the second episode of Foodie Talk. Today in our studio, I have a great friend of mine, Eleanor McHale. She's a senior pharmacist who lives and works in Ireland. Today in our episode, she'll be talking extensively about polypharmacy. Eleanor, thanks for, for being in our show. Thank it's you very a much. Great pleasure to My see pleasure. you. Here. Yeah. So how was your new year? Very good. Yeah. Yes. Busy, you, busy. Busy, busy with that. Work, <laughs> children, you know. You're busy all the time, I know. Yes. So uh, today's episode, uh, we'll we're going to speak explain. about polypharmacy. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, I suppose just to introduce myself, mm. I'm a supervising pharmacist in Malloy's Pharmacy in Garden Street. Yeah. I have extensive experience in both the community, hospital, and also residential care homes, which it has a lot to do with polypharmacy. Absolutely. Yeah. What is polypharmacy? Mm. Polypharmacy is the concurrent use of excessive amounts of medication. It's not always about the number of medications, although when you read about it, it's, oh, it's five to 10 medications that a patient takes. It doesn't, have to, it doesn't have to be about that. It's about the adverse effects that these medications have on the body. Yeah. There are two different types of polypharmacies. You have inappropriate yeah. and appropriate polypharmacy. You could have numerous medications, but no actual detrimental or adverse effects on the body, mm. where the, dr the drug therapy is objective and the therapeutic, up the therapeutic index, everything is fine. Inappropriate polypharmacy is where the therapeutic objective is not, and the adverse dangerous, adverse reactions are detrimental to the patient. They do higher, yeah. Yes. Mm. Factors that can affect polypharmacy. Confusion with medication. Mm. Not familiar with what medication you're taking. In a inability to use a product like an inhaler, maybe an eye drop, mm -hmm. therefore glycoma isn't treated, or COPD, the inhaler, new inhaler added onto that, and another inhaler, possibly nebules. Um, you could also have the inability to, or with the frame of mind of thinking of, well, one is good, but two are better. Yeah. And this can cause an overdose. Yeah. We also have to be mindful of people that have um, literacy problems yeah. or poor English skills. Mm. So then they leave the pharmacy not knowing what medication or how to use it correctly. If we if we give them the understanding, then there are no polypharmacy difficulties. Yeah. Polypharmacy can cause adverse drug reactions. Yeah. Poor compliance, mm -hmm. poor adherence, and a very poor quality of life. And you ha have you seen in your in your career as a pharmacist, supervising pharmacist, have you ever seen a severe case of polypharmacy, or uh, or have you heard about anything like this recently? Um, I've seen some cases mm -hmm. actually. In a review, I had. Um, um, in a nursing home, there was um, a lady on tam a Tamox used for, for breast cancer. Yeah. And on speaking to a nurse, it was just she was a new she was a new admit. Mm -hmm. It was there were uh, bruising under the skin, which was they thought as a result of, a, of, of an allergy to the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. Yeah. But it was later I indicated that this was actually a serious side effect from Tamox. Tamox yeah. She was admitted to hospital. Tamox discontinued. Yeah. Blood clots. That's just one example of me. And that, you know, do you think it's because of uh, lesser understanding or poor literacy about the drugs uh, with, the, with the healthcare professionals, or? Um, or is it due to the poor communication between the between the hospitals and? Quite possibly, mm -hmm. you would see a lot of um, you can see a lot of hospital errors, or even on a transcript of a prescription yeah. from a hospital, not meaningful for the for the nursing home at all. Mm -hmm. But it, it, yes, I've seen a lot. Mm -hmm. I find that probably that the elderly would have a, an advantage mm -hmm. in the nursing home setting as opposed to our community setting. Living in a community. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. because they're on their own. Yeah. Um, in the nursing home setting, they're more they're, it's, the medication is more supervised, yeah. and it's in no disrespect to anybody. It's yeah. just it's 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 the way it is really. Yeah. Um, from my own nursing home experience, I know that we would provide regular audits, yeah. review for medication. Mm -hmm. So, clinical pharmacy is quite dear to my heart. Yeah. I love it. Exploring yeah. medication. We could have two patients, one in a nursing home setting, one in a community setting, community. on exactly the yeah. same medication. How they take the medication completely different. Pharmacodynamics, yeah. your pharmacokinetics Kinetics, also have, yeah. to be, have to be considered. You have a different um, distribution, absorption, metabolism, mm -hmm. and even excretion of a medication for these two people exactly on the same beds. Mm -hmm. Also, it's the response of how our body deals with and, mm -hmm. and, and responds to the drugs in our body. This can also have, a, have different effects. Yeah. Um, where you have Laxatives, yeah. benzodiazepines, yeah. Your, all of your pain relief. 
in a nursing home setting, these can be administered in a PRN or when required basis, mm -hmm. where in the community setting, they're more likely to take them all together. Absolutely, yeah. 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 That's where I feel that... Uh, There's a lack a, of awareness, is it? A lack of awareness and probably a severe disadvantage yeah. to, the, to the community. Although, I have to say, I try my best. Yeah. So, for a prescription, for myself, yeah. I'd strip it back to the bones, the bare bones. Yeah. I love it really, to be fair, the, as in just investigating. Yeah. You'd maybe um, take the take the medical condition, mm -hmm. then evaluate what medication these patients are on. But then it's also to to really consider if these medications are going to counteract an existing condition they have. Mm -hmm. Tricyclic antidepressants, totally contraindicated with glaucoma. Mm -hmm. So this is where we this is our job, this is our function, um, and we're giving the best practice to the community mm. when, when we explore and deliver a service to, to, to everybody, really. Mm. Um, Dr. Beer, mm. Mark H. Beer, he was responsible for um, the investigation of involuntary use of medication in the elderly. Okay. What he did was, interestingly, um, I read a few facts. Mm -hmm. he, he investigated 850 nursing home prescriptions in Boston alone, okay. where he studied the sedative, yeah. Antihistamines, benzodiazepines, non steroidal anti inflammatories, and just saw the effect and the adverse, uh, adverse reactions these had on the elderly. Yeah. This then led to his beer criteria, which um, directed yeah. um, professionals and healthcare professionals um, to see more what the medication actually does to the, does to the elderly and to the general public. Yeah. Um, 2003, he allowed ourselves. You as a nurse, mm. myself as a pharmacist, and other GPs to have their input mm -hmm. into the whole criteria. It investigated and gave um, a stop-start criteria. Mm -hmm. Stop-start criteria is quite, it's, it's well, the stop is um, a screening tool for the older prescribed and inappropriate prescription medicines, and the start is the screening tool to alert, mm -hmm. to advise GPs what proper medication should be prescribed. You have um, tricyclic antidepressants which I've said, mm -hmm. totally contraindicated with glaucoma, mm. dry mouth constipation, so they shouldn't be used. This is all in his criteria. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, mm -hmm. fabulous. Um, contraindicated for your uh, renal function, which we need to consider hepatic and renal function when we're looking and dispensing of prescriptions. Yeah. This can all lead to severe adverse reactions. Um, another example is our benzodiazepines frequently, frequently dispensed, yeah. um, causing uh, postural hypertension, falls, falls, accidents, it's, it's endless really. Mm. And histamines, these also have, if they have sedative effects, can have, uh, can also, side effects, yes, side mm -hmm. effects of falls. Um, laxatives, commonly used, but more commonly used not correctly. Um, I would have a lot of our walk-in prescriptions where they'd be taking laxatives very regularly when they're not really they're not needed and only it should be in a nursing home setting where this would be where this would be used correctly and tell me what do you think is the best way to reduce the polypharmacy for our community i think we need education mm -hmm. communication but also maybe to provide a service of a monitored dose a monitored dosing system mm -hmm. just for the elderly or people that are living alone mm -hmm. they don't have to do it alone and many do when they're afraid to ask questions yeah keep referring back to our nursing home setting because it's supervised and it's nurses that are well skilled and trained mm. that are administering medication. So you know that 50% of polypharmacy and adverse drug reactions are in elderly but only 21% 20, 20, are in nursing home, home setting. So that's a huge, mm. that, that, that's a huge percentage um, for a community. Yeah. We need to reduce this. Mm. The, the best way is to, to monitor properly, to educate uh, people and, and communicate, communication. open communication yes. as well. Every town has a pharmacy. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's for all our viewers to actually go and talk to the yeah. pharmacist down there and basically have a better understanding bef before what you actually take in. Yes, we are the healthcare professionals, we're drug experts. We've, we've, we've studied, we, we know the pharmacology of medication mm. and no two people are going to be the same. Before we started recording, you were mentioning about um, you know herbal medicines and how this could have an adverse effects on the medications one they take. Yes. Could you actually share with our viewers? Um, 
in January 2018, I read an article where 48% of cases um, were affected, 48 cases were reported of adverse drug reactions, 15 of these were extremely serious. Mm -hmm. There are health food stores that, like my own store, are right on site, mm -hmm. beside the pharmacy, so we can, I can pop in and advise. Mm -hmm. But I feel, I, I feel the urgency to educate people, not maybe to cautiously purchase herbal eradication online if they're on prescription medications. Mm -hmm. So Eleanor, what's the role of the healthcare professionals, nurses and pharmacists? How can we minimise the effects of polypharmacy? We need to communicate together. Yeah. Pharmacists, we're the drug ex experts. Yeah. So clinically we need to assess the medication, seeing if it's suitable for the patient, mm -hmm. what the side effects are, unnecessary medication, polypharmacy. We need to communicate, audits, reviews, where we speak together bring the prescription back to the, to the bare minimum, to the bones, to see what actually is the, what benefits the patient. Reducing our side effects, reducing unnecessary medication, and possibly reviewing medication to see, maybe it's all not needed to be regular. Mm -hmm. Why cannot our benzodiazepines, our sleeping tablets, be audited, mm -hmm. um, reviewed, and possibly just used for PRN cases? Okay. I find in the community, yeah. this is used excessively. Um, then we have side effects of falls, sedation. It's not good for the quality of the patient. Mm -hmm. Poor adherence. They forget to take their medication. So since the beers criteria, I feel other pieces could be added to the draft. Mm -hmm. Our speed of life and change of life has, has excelled. We have online purchase of herbal remedies. Mm -hmm. Who knows the complications of, of herbal remedies and prescription drugs? Yeah. Do you actually realize in 2001, $5.6 billion was spent on herbal medication. This excelled in 2012 yeah. to 70 billion. Wow. We have purchase of St. John's wort, which is contraindicated with antidepressants, mm -hmm. warfarin, and oral contraceptive. Ginseng, ginger, contraindicated with the warfarin patients and can cause a severe bleed out. Mm -hmm. Who consults these patients when they're ticking the click and collect? We can in our store, but this is not available online. Another problem we have is the pulling of the heavy suitcase across the airports, mm. loaded with medication. Mm. How often have I been reminded that we can get that cheaper in our other stores or in, in Spain, Portugal, yeah. when who has given advice on the medication? Who's told that Arthrotec and Dick and Dick Clack cannot be used together for a severe bleed out? Nobody. What have you got? Possibly a smile and a Muchas gracias. Mm. Adios. I feel on another case, the late night supermarkets and our garages, they pose a problem with polypharmacy. Mm -hmm. Purchasing of paracetamols or non-steroidals for Joe Blog, who's on Zarelto and has a massive bleed. Mm. Who's there to help? Did you get petrol or diesel? What he asked. Are you, are you consulted on what medication we're using? Where the, it's at the pharmacy, and we're the prime drug health care professionals that provide a free, free service with no appointment needed. It's us that we need to be consulted on medication to prevent polypharmacy. In the, in the elderly, we can communicate with the nurses and also the GPs to reduce this. And obviously in the hospitals as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a teamwork. It's all teamwork, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, and I feel quite passionate about it, to yeah. be fair. Yeah. I think we need to in, use what is polypharmacy exactly, the yeah. wipe, to wipe out this severe problem. Yeah. Improving the lifestyle of our, of our peers. So Eleanor, it was a quite informative session for all of our viewers. So Thank thanks you. again for being in our show and it's a wonderful pleasure to meet you again. Thank so you happy new year you. and I will see you in future videos. You can follow our content on Facebook, YouTube and, and Twitter. As well as guys, if you like this video, please share and subscribe to our channel. Also, visit our website, hirehood.com, neighborhood for professionals. Thank you very much. See you with another video. Bye.